actually, I want to start with writing. Obviously, I teach writing, so this is this is the the subject that I probably feel most passionately about. But also, I think that the I think that the challenges that we face in teaching writing are challenges that are duplicated all across the curriculum. So this can maybe be a little bit of a case study for us in how we make the transition from grammar stage to logic stage to rhetoric. So um, I, I touched on this before, but let me emphasize it again. During the grammar stage, students undergo two different steps when they write. You do too, it's just that you're a grown up, so you do it without noticing. And also, this is a real challenge for most teachers. Most people who go into teaching are pretty comfortable with writing because they already process things in sort of a typical academic way. So if you are a teacher, and especially if you have a graduate degree, you probably have no idea how hard it is for 60% of your students to get a sentence down on paper. Okay, because you're just naturally, you already think that way, otherwise you wouldn't be in a classroom. So there are actually two steps in writing. And again, we can extrapolate this to other subjects as well. Students have an idea and it's inarticulate. And I just always have a picture in my mind because this is how I feel when I sit down in front of my computer to write. That was my inarticulate idea. Um, now, to get from that inarticulate idea to putting the idea into words is a distinct mental effort, okay? So I've got to take this idea. Now I have to come up with the words. That's step number one. Step number two is to take that idea in words and then to put it down on paper. So that, that's a whole different set of skills. Now, the problem that we have with grammar stage writing is that we tend to teach these two steps simultaneously. You know, come up with an idea, write it down on paper. And we skip the fact that there are two mental operations going on. And one of the real, you know, one of the, the real things we have to keep in mind whenever we're teaching the beginning stages of a subject is that whenever you do two new and difficult things at the same time, it tends to jam up your mental process. You know, so the kid that's just like, I don't know what, you know, that kid needs to be taught that there's actually two different things. First, you can take an idea and put it into words. Don't forget about the paper. Now we're going to take the word, the idea in words, and we're going to put that down on paper. So one of the one of the huge principles in grammar stage learning is to split apart difficult tasks and try to think creatively about how to teach those two steps separately before we bring them together, because the students got two tasks. First, they've got to come up with content, and then secondly, they've got to figure out how to write about that content. Two separate steps. So in writing, in the grammar stage, the way we do this is we break those tasks apart. Caveat before I go through this. Not every student needs to do this, okay? There are kids who just intuitively figure out how to take words and put them down on paper. I wrote my first novel, I think I was seven. I never remember not being able to write. And then I had kids and God gave me three boys in a row. And I thought, what is happening here? You know, you give them, a, when, the first time I was given a pencil, I think I probably just started writing. And I gave them a pencil, you know, and they're like, um, it's just, it's a whole, it's just a whole different thing. And the problem is that most of our writing programs, and again, this goes across the board for grammar school programs, they tend to be geared towards students who have an intuitive ability to get those words down on paper. And they don't take seriously enough the task that we all have as teachers, which is to explain the separate steps of a process. So the way we do this for the students who are struggling is first of all, we have them copy sentences because a big part of writing is, is visualizing. Writing is a physical act. You know, you end up with an artifact, a thing on paper, and you've got to be able to visualize what that looks like before you can do it. So we have students copy sentences in order to get that mental picture of what writing looks like. And then we have them start to write sentences from dictation. And the purpose of dictation is to give students the opportunity to practice that second half of the, pro the process, the, the taking words that they can't see and putting those words down on paper without the pressure of simultaneously performing the first step in the process which is coming up with an idea and putting it into words, right? We're, we're breaking these things apart. And that's your principle of grammar stage teaching, break difficult tasks apart. 
Then the first part of the process, which is putting ideas into words, is why we use narration across the curriculum. We use it in literature, we use it in history, we use it in science. We give the student information, and then we ask the student to tell us that information back in complete sentences, which you've been teaching them to do in preschool and in kindergarten, and in their own words. They're practicing putting the idea into words, again, without the pressure of having to come up with the subject matter in the first place. There are so many ways in which we have to break these complex tasks apart. So elementary grammar school writing is teaching them this skill, taking an idea, putting it into words, putting those words down on paper. And your goal is by fourth grade, these are for your struggling students, to have the student be able to tell themselves, often out loud, what they're going to write, listen to themselves, and then essentially take down their own dictation. Now you've taught them grammar stage writing. You have taught them the basic skill, and they have to have that in place before they can move on to doing outlines, doing original compositions in middle school. When this first stage gets skipped, you're going to end up with a healthy percentage of fifth and sixth graders who just give you the deer in the headlights look when you ask them to write. Okay, does this make sense? Okay, so there's your grammar school. Now, this again is one of the principles of grammar school teaching, again, across the subjects, is you're not asking them to be creative. If they want to be creative, that's awesome. If they want to go away, you know, and write their write stories or poems in the corner, that's great. And even as a teacher, I would encourage you not even to correct those if the student brings you something that they've written. You're like, that's fantastic, that's great, that is really good. You correct what you're assigning them as a way of teaching them how to get those words down on paper. And this is another principle for grammar stage teaching. Creativity is often an outgrowth of maturity. If you try to teach a second grader how to write by asking them to make up a story, you're going to frustrate at least half the kids in your class. They're simply not ready to do that. So the focus needs to be on this very, very basic process of teaching them the skill of coming, of coming up with words and putting those words down on paper. Now, the problem that you're going to face is that if you do this, if you take it seriously, particularly for your struggling students, and the less literacy there is in the household, the more students need to do this process, um, you're going to end up with third graders whose writing assignments are writing down two or three sentences from dictation, while um, the neighbor's third grader is writing 12-page research papers. Because that tends to be how most non-classical and particularly public classrooms teach writing. The measure of how well they're doing is how big the projects are at an early age. I can get, now, and this will happen. Um, you know, you're gonna have a parent come in and say, well, you know, her, her little friend here is doing research papers. Why are we still copying sentences? I have seen some of those research papers and I can guarantee you that they are not good. Either the parent wrote them or they were copied off Wikipedia because that is what a third grader is capable of doing. So it takes a certain amount of courage to say to parents, we are, we are a rigorous, academically excellent, high achieving school and that's why your child is writing single sentences. But that is part, again, of this neoclassical pattern, is that we, we take the time to put proper foundations into place. We do not rush the children. We do not have an appearance of rigor, which simply leaves half of them in the dust and doesn't lay a good and solid foundation. Now, what you're then doing, what you do in, in the grammar stage on the sentence level, is what you're doing at the logic stage in the middle grades on the um, thought level. So outlining, I might think I even have an outline on the next page. Okay, here we go. Outlining is a way of practicing this second part of the writing sentence on a, um, a full composition basis, not just on a single sentence basis. So when you are making an outline, what you're doing is kind of equivalent to that second part of the writing process where you're taking, you know, you're taking this idea in words and you're putting the words down on paper. When you outline, you're looking at how somebody else took an idea put in, and put it into words and then put those words down on paper. 
you are looking at a model for your own writing. So one of the focuses of logic stage writing has to be outlining in order to give the student plenty of models to look at in order to teach them how to structure their own compositions. I've got an example for you. Okay, so this is just, I assume you know this, but this is the purpose of outlining is to be able to say, here's the main point, here's the supporting point, here's details about those supporting points. So that's what you're aiming to have them do. Um, I'm gonna actually come back to this in a minute. I'm gonna do this out of order. So here is, this is just an example of a nicely developed thought. This is the sort of thing that a middle grade student should be capable of outlining. And it's about life in China under the Mongols. And I'm not gonna read you the whole thing because we're gonna skip ahead and we're gonna look at the outline of this. Basically it says, here's life in China under the Mongols. Here were the hardships. Here were the things that changed. Here were the things that stayed the same. Okay, there's the outline of it. If you outline this passage, then what you see is life in China under the Mongols. A, here were the difficulties, and then there's a list of the difficulties. B, here are the things that persisted. Here are the Chinese customs that persisted. Now, in one sense, the student has just made an outline. But there's something much deeper going on here, which is that the student has just been given a model on how to develop an idea with comparison and contrast. What is one way in which we can write about a historical period? Well, we can talk about the things that stayed the same and then the things that changed. You're giving students a way to develop ideas, to take those ideas and put them down in order. And this is then becomes a model for how they can develop their own compositions. Now, this particular, this is, this is this particular outline text, the model is, you have a historical time frame, you give a negative aspect of it, you give a positive aspect of it. You've just taught them what, here, and I'm gonna go back. Sorry, I'm doing this in the most confusing manner possible. You're doing, what you are teaching them is one of the basic literary forms that Aristotle describes. He calls these topoi, they're places. They are places to go when you're asked to write a composition, right? So you ask your middle grade student to write a composition about the history that they're learning. How do they even know what to write about? How do they know um, where to start? Well, Aristotle says, here are different forms. You can write a narration. You can tell me what happened. You can do it chronologically. You can do it by significance. You can write a description. You can write a description of a place in space. You can write a description of how something happened. You can explain something. And that actually is what you have in that passage about the Mongols. You're explaining life, what it was under the Mongols, by saying what was important about it, both positive and negative. Now I'm going through this very quickly because you don't need to know all of this in order to do outlining with your middle grade students. But the use of outlining as a composition technique, not just as a way to understand your history or your science, and students should be outlining across the board in middle school, teaches them how ideas are developed by other writers. And that becomes a way in which they can model their own writing. Now, if we're talking about struggling middle grade students, then rather than asking them to do original compositions, I'll go back to the things that they're not doing that the neighbor's kids are doing. Long papers, required creative writing, and invention or extensive development of original topics. They're not ready to do that in many cases. Middle grade writing, they are still learning the patterns, right? That's the distinctive of this logic stage teaching, recognizing patterns. When they outline, they will see over and over again how writers use patterns to develop composition. Those patterns will then be something that they can learn to use in high school as they are developing their own ideas. But they've got to have the pattern in their mind first. So when we're thinking about logic stage and high school writing, the logic stage, you are really focusing on giving them models, giving them patterns, so that when they get into high school, they've got this entire toolbox of forms in order to invent their own compositions, in order to do their own original writing. Now I'm gonna go back to what I said at the beginning of this. Remember that we're doing this to protect students who aren't developmentally ready to move on to the next stage. 
not to restrict students who are. But in the classical tradition, you didn't do much original writing until high school. We have pushed this originality all the way back into the early grades as a writing instructional technique at times that are completely developmentally inappropriate for it. So part of writing in the neoclassical tradition is that if we take seriously this grammar, logic, rhetoric, we don't ask students to do original composition until they've got the grammar stage tools in place, which means they can write easily and grammatically, and the logic stage skills in place, which means that they have been exposed to a number of different ways to develop an idea because they have outlined the work of other people. Those are the grammar stage and the logic stage tasks, and they are preparation for the original writing that happens in high school. When you push that original writing back before these basics are put into place, what you get is, first of all, students who do just fine because they've intuitively figured it out, although they can't tell you why, and students who struggle. And it's always been one of my concerns with classical schools that you don't always know who you're losing from year to year because they got lost and just couldn't catch up again. Um, much of our teaching does, I think, tend to favor the kid who has an intuitive grasp of what's going on rather than helping to bring along the kid that needs that step-by-step -step basic instruction. So I wanted to sort of do a little bit of this deep dive into writing because I think it's a model for the challenge that we have as we move from grammar stage to logic stage to the rhetoric stage.